Hello, and welcome to POMA Does, a podcast produced by the Pennsylvania Osteopathic Medical Association. We provide a voice for osteopathic medicine and share insights on issues important to osteopathic physicians, residents, and students, as well as those who embrace the osteopathic philosophy. POMA's mission is to promote the distinctive philosophy and practice of osteopathic medicine in Pennsylvania for our members and their patients. Thanks for tuning in. Hi there, and welcome to POMA Does, a podcast series produced by the Pennsylvania Osteopathic Medical Association. I'm Lisa Witherite Rig, and for at least the next eight days, as of this recording, I am the sitting president of the award winning Pennsylvania Osteopathic Medical Association. Award winning? Why do you ask? Well, that's what we're here to talk about today. During the 2022 OMED congregation in Boston, Massachusetts, the Pennsylvania Osteopathic Medical Association received the American Osteopathic Association Outstanding Affiliate. And we're here today to talk about that. With me today is Chief Staff Officer of the Pennsylvania Osteopathic Medical Association, Diana Ewer, and Dr. Frank Tercy, the Chair of the AOA Bureau of Affiliate Relations. I will let Diana and Frank introduce themselves. I'm Diana Ewer. I'm the Chief Staff Officer of POMA. And it is my pleasure to be the person behind the leadership. And I'm grateful to be on this podcast with both Dr. Witherite Reed and Dr. Tercy. And Frank, will you introduce yourself? Sure. I'm Dr. Frank Tercy. I'm a family physician in Erie, Pennsylvania. I'm also on the American Osteopathic Association's Board of Trustees and presently the chair of the Bureau of Affiliate Relations. The Bureau of Affiliate Relations. What is that and what do they do for the AOA? The Bureau of Affiliate Relations, or the BAR, was is to provide the AOA state and the specialty affiliates with a direct link to structured opportunities to participate with the AOA policy development and the processes that are involved. In the past, it was felt sometimes there was a lack of of communication, that the AOA was dictating policy without input from those who are directly associated and work so hard within the AOA. So the bar was created to, one, provide the affiliates a forum so we can exchange information. It was designed for the state, and especially the affiliates, to advise the AOA on the pertinent issues, to gather, disseminate relevant information, to review and provide input for affiliate leaders' education, and to oversee the affiliate award recognition program. And lastly, to mentor each other, educate each other on what they do and how to make their life a little bit easier. And then the BAR, it reports to, directly to the Board of Trustees of the AOA. And Frank, I just find it funny that you're the chairman of the bar. And I love that. This year, I would have had to recuse myself for all well, this last year, probably. It was done purposely on the merits of the POMA and the hard work of Diana and her staff involved. Thank you, Frank. And Diana, tell us a little bit about what you do and how you do it and how it fits in with the AOA. Well, What I do is focus more on the governance side of POMA as a nonprofit association. And my team carries on with the day-to-day operations of our strategic plan areas. And if you've not heard the podcast about our strategic plan, please take a listen to it and it'll help you understand better. Each of our team members is assigned to a strategic pillar. Those pillars and the activities underneath those pillars are guided by our strategic plan. And I oversee everything relative to the team and achieving what we need to strategically under the pillars, as well as serve as the staff liaison for the governance pillar, which is the board, various committees, groups, task forces. And we put things together and they become some pretty nice programs. And basically we were recognized for the efforts that we put forth last year in education, leadership, membership, advocacy, and student and early career physician outreach. Wonderful. So Diana, tell me how the Bureau of Affiliate Affairs affects Puma. Well, I happen to be on that bureau Although, much like Dr. Tercy, I feel like I've recused myself from a lot this past year. But it really is an opportunity for whether you're a state or a specialty to bring forward the issues that you see occurring in your respective areas. The specialties have a national presence. The states are recognized as their own entities within the specific state areas in which they reside and are incorporated. The Bureau itself, again, it's data gathering, it's information, it's 
just an opportunity to have more of a presence among the decisions relative to the decisions that the AOA is making. So as all of you know that have been listening to me this past year, this was my year to emphasize collaboration. Collaboration is basically working with each other to elevate the entire group. And that, for me, also means collaboration with the AOA. So the Outstanding Affiliate Award, certainly quite an honor, and it recognizes the Pennsylvania Osteopathic Medical Association for their achievements and excellence in those categories, education, advocacy, leadership, and membership. But the other thing it does is it allows other affiliate organizations to see what worked for us and to share that information. So we, as more than just the POMA, but as part of the AOA, can elevate everybody and be a better association for our members and our patients. Frank, can you share a little bit about the background and the purpose? Because it hasn't been around for very long. No, it is not. It's a relatively new bureau and certainly a relatively new awards. But the Outstanding Affiliate Awards, they were created in 2021 by the AOA Board of Trustees. They were started to recognize the tremendous contributions that affiliates make to the success of the osteopathic profession. There's two to three affiliates are selected each year on the basis of the award and the application process. So that's the background of it. So it's only been in existence will be the third award year type thing. The goals are to acknowledge the affiliates that can demonstrate creativity, innovation, resourcefulness, and flexibility. It's to highlight their outstanding affiliate performances, to recognize the affiliate contributions to the advancement of the osteopathic profession, and celebrate and share noteworthy programs and initiatives with all the affiliates to encourage best practices. To be eligible, first of all, all state and specialty college affiliates are eligible for nomination for the award. Again, two to three recipients are then identified among the state and specialty college affiliates. So it's brought up by the members of the bar itself. The only two, I guess, the other parts of it is that you can self-nominate if you want. You can be nominated by others. And once you get Get the award, you're ineligible for the next three years of award. So it's not going to be a slam dunk for a certain groups each year type thing. So that's the eligibility. And then just to briefly maybe comment on the criteria, the affiliates, we want them to address their accomplishments to make the application a process. They can send in obviously the written application. They're encouraged any print they want to send with their application, any programs they've had, any videos they have that would back up their application. And then the categories, as an example, not all inclusive, but educational programs and events, whether that's C CME, the webinars, professional development type of things, leadership, does the affiliate have a training program that's maybe unique and development of succession planning, membership, uh, what is their recruitment techniques, the, their abilities to retain and engage initiatives for the benefit of all, advocacy, obviously, for legislative and community professional affairs, communications and branding, both internal and external communications with the members and other key stakeholders, the social media, promotion of the osteopathic profession, again, student residency, early career physician, are there any customized programs and benefits and leadership opportunities that they may have? And then lastly would be even that diversity, equity, and inclusion. Do the affiliates have any plans, a way to bring in outside groups and make them part of the family, so to speak? So that's the criteria. I don't know if you'll make it any farther, but the, again, that's the the submission form and the application is then reviewed by the Bureau of Affiliate Relations. They review all the nominations and the material. They present a slate of recommended nominees to the AOA Committee on Awards. That committee then also reviews the slate. They make a recommendation of the grinning recipients directly up to then the AOA Board of Trustees, and then the Board of Trustees gives its final approval. So that's the story. And we want to emphasize that everybody that may have been involved in Pennsylvania in that process actually recused themselves from a evaluating Pennsylvania's application. Is that correct, Frank? That is absolutely correct. Yeah, we wanted to do this as fair, open communication, if you will, just so everybody knows what the process was among it and the fact that, yeah, you can't just stack the team and then just as much as possible is done it totally blinded even at first just to see, okay, we don't even know who this application is, but is it a good one or a bad one? Now, Subsequently, it's a small enough group that you know who was what at some point. But yeah, even those who didn't recuse themselves, they don't know, well, gee, we want to you know, vote for this person, keep somebody happy, or we don't want to irritate this group, so we better make them happy. It's done on the merits and the quality of the presentation. So anybody that reads our Palma newsletter that comes out every month for the past year, I've been defining words and then writing about that word. This past month, I actually wrote on humility. And I truly believe humility is not thinking less less of yourself, it's thinking more of others. When Pennsylvania decided to apply 
for this honor. It was not one of grandiosity or with a spirit of overwhelming pride in a negative way, but with humility that we did want to share. We were proud of what we have done and we wanted to share our accomplishments in the case it may help other associations. So Diana, can you share with us the process of application? We did self-nominate, correct? We did self-nominate. We self-nominated the year before and did not get recognized. But before I get into that, I do want to point out that the way the process is served, the way the individual organizations are evaluated, there's not, it's a level playing field for everyone. If you've seen one affiliate, you've seen one affiliate. They all operate differently. They all have varying capacities. They all have different team members, different levels of team members, and they also have different budgets. So just because you may look at something, oh yeah, they can do that. They have money to do that. We look at things that have transferability. If someone in a state association took one of the programs that we did, they could take it, manage it, introduce it, use the same criteria and background that we did for it and probably make a huge success of it. So from my perspective, and I'm not a person that likes to shout out, look at us, look at what we're doing. Hey, this is great. I'm probably going to just look at the criteria every year and say, so what have we done? When you're put in the position where you're kind of forced to qualify what you've been doing, you'll find that you've been doing a whole lot more than you ever thought you were to begin with. Because, oh yeah, I forgot about this. And, oh, hey, we just did a leadership training program. Forgot about that. It really is a good organizational evaluation of the prior year that you've had. And then information can be shared with board members leadership. If you're wondering what we've been working on, here's what we've been doing. You may not necessarily have something under each criteria, which is not necessarily a bad thing. I've seen applications where people come in and say, this was the focus of our year and this is what we did and not have anything under two other areas. So then you go, you look at it from a resource perspective and if this has been wildly successful, they're deserving of recognition. So making it fit in the boxes is sometimes a bit of a challenge. That's what I was going to say. We're actually very limited to the number of words that we can use for each submission in each category. But honestly, what we at Palma do, Dio, we go back to our pillars and our four pillars of education, membership, advocacy, and communication. And we look at what we do. We look at our mission and we make sure everything that we are doing goes back to our strategic plan. So in my opinion, one of our strongest contribution is that in the field of education. And some of the things we highlighted in our application on education is our accreditation under the ACCME, as well as continued accreditation with the AOA with distinction for our osteopathic education. What that means is being both ACCME and AOA accredited for our CME, our educational programs are relevant to all of our members. We didn't do the ACCME accreditation to make a bunch of money by accrediting other programs. We did it because we know some of our osteopathic physician members are also certified under allopathic boards. And we want our osteopathic education, and I will stress our education is distinctively osteopathic. We want that to be relevant to all of our members, regardless of their board certification status, though we do encourage osteopathic boards. And the other thing we have done with our education is during the pandemic, we really needed to find a way to maintain the relevance of our educational programs. And we have studied and looked at various models and we've put together a really good hybrid model that works for our members. We've produced over a hundred category 1A CME credits every year, even since the pandemic. I think we were like 124, 125 last year, as well as CME credits under these podcasts. So keep listening and get your CME credits for some of the podcasts that are eligible, as well as CME available in our publications. Diana, will you talk a little bit about some of the submission information under membership and advocacy? Sure. So Palma has a district structure as well as a state structure. We've divided up the state by county 
to ensure that individuals have the benefit of programming occurring in their area. We have, we implemented the District Challenge, and the District Challenge is a program that looks at what districts are doing and asks some similar questions. What you do relative to being an osteopathic physician is very community-oriented based. So have you done any community-based programs? Have you looked at things like that? Have you done social interactions? Because before the pandemic, we had allotted a certain amount per district to engage socially, just to get away from the office and get away from the day-to-day and do something fun as a group. And that's proved pretty successful. We're looking at ways we can always enhance it and improve it. But if you do social programs, if you do continuing medical education programs, you all get points for that. Do you write articles? We have an article called, How Are You Doing? And it's to help with the health and wellness and mental health of the osteopathic physicians, students, and residents that we serve. We have a mental task force that has been working on it. So all of these are what I would call indirect member benefits of being a member of POMA, where you know you have the direct member benefits, which is discounts on continuing medical education, discounts on specific programming, and the opportunity to do some things along those lines. I think one of the most creative things that we did during this period, and that was done by Jason, who is our director of member engagement, they started a POMA Steps for All, which between in a certain period, you can track your steps, you can put that information into a charity program, and you can earn funding for very specific charities. Again, it's a way to get individuals together, do things, you know, you could do a walk for charity and walk with your colleagues because it's through the Charity Miles app. There's no additional staff time involved. There's no calculation. There's actually no payment on POMA's behalf at all. The individuals who sign up to do the walking select the charity that they would like to benefit from that walk. So it was a real creative way of getting folks together and thinking about things in a different way that resulted in the expenditure of very little staff time. Now, don't you think that helps, you know, in this day and age, especially they always say, oh, younger people don't want to join and younger people don't want to do this and do that. I found they want to, but they have to see that there's a benefit for them to get a voice, not just to be on a committee. And some of the things Diana just mentioned, even at the district social events, there's always a little business mixed in with it just to make sure they hear our spiel, if you will. But you know, too often I hear, well, the AOA, that's Chicago-based and that's too far out. I don't know that. And then even maybe, let's say, Poma, you know, but that's in Harrisburg and they don't listen to us. But at the district level, they actually get to see what actually happens at the front lines of medicine. What can we do to help? And like anything else, if you can get them involved and excited about doing something locally, then I found that they're much more likely to want to do something than at the state level to and have a bigger voice type thing. So all the things that I just mentioned have worked very, very well to at least get our name out there, to remind them that we exist and that we know they exist. Like I said, otherwise, so what does POMA do for me? Well, if you don't have some of these things, maybe somebody really doesn't know what POMA does for them, but I think it's worked very, very well. And you know, POMA's leadership is committed to visiting the districts. Myself, I was able to get to all but two districts during this past year, and our incoming president, Dr. John Collada, is committed to being a very visible president and interactive as well, as was Dr. Zawissa and Dr. Battistella before him. So I'd like to ask, Frank, I mean, not that we applied for this award because we wanted a big prize. We applied for it because it's what we do. It's part of who we are. But what kind of benefits does the recipient of this major award get? Well, one is the, obviously the recognition from peers, which is always not a bad thing to get. There's a trophy involved. The announcement is made at the OMED meeting every fall, which kind of brings together as many affiliates and colleges at the like a welcome home meeting, if you will. So they get the, to at least participate in that and to say a few words. But I think the biggest thing, again, is it makes sure people know what the affiliates are doing. Again, even within the Bureau of Affiliate Relations with the bar, they have their all desires, they have their all needs, but they don't know how to communicate them to find out, is there an answer already made? So they don't have to reinvent the wheel each time. And as Diana mentioned somewhat earlier, you know, you got all these different affiliates and then all you know is you got all these different affiliates. They all do things differently. They all got different ways they want to do it. And sometimes, again, ours works for us very, very well, but we may pick up, let's say from this year's winners, an idea that, oh, gee, we never thought of that. And we do have monthly meetings within the bar as well so that people can bring up topics that 
hopefully is of benefit to all of them, you know, type thing. So this award, it gets a featured story in the affiliate news. So there's a little uh, written verse, if you will, as well, and a featured story in the DO magazine, which is now mostly online, but it, it's there for people to, to look at. So if they didn't hear the presentation, but they want the information, there are ways to get it. So I think it really benefits that open communication. And even at the board level of the board of trustees, we don't purposely try to just manhandle or dictate policy. But if we don't hear what people really need or want, we don't know if some of the things that have been instituted, have they worked? Have they not worked? Are we being heavy handed? So this, even with the award, because then we look at it as the board of trustees, we read all the applications. So even if it's not a winning idea, we get to see all the ideas from all the applicants. Diana, any closing thoughts from the chief staff officer of the award-winning Pennsylvania Osteopathic Medical Association? Well, I guess you can keep saying that for three years <laughs> since we can't reapply for the award. But, you know, I would encourage any state, any specialty, any member of another state or specialty that's listening to the program. It's a good thing to do. From my perspective, I know we all do a lot. And sometimes we're at a level of weed in a certain time frame or certain time of year where it's worth it to look up and see just exactly what you have accomplished over a year and how well it fits with the strategic plan and how you're moving an organization forward. Because ultimately, the people that benefit are the patients of our physicians. And as I look back on my past year, as I'm getting ready to pass the gavel to Dr. Collada, certainly not only being the recipient of this acknowledgement, but knowing that it's not something we did for the acknowledgement. It's something we do for our members, for their patients, and for our students, our residents, our young physicians in practice. And then indirectly as well for the staff, of Diana's staff, who works exceptionally hard in all different groups. You know, they're overworked, underpaid, and the whole bit. They do a great job. But I think in a backwards way as well, it maybe pats them on the back a little bit too and say, hey, yeah, people do recognize that we're doing something important and doing it well. I agree, Frank. Any closing thoughts, Diana? No, I just appreciate the opportunity to share why. We are the award-winning Pennsylvania Osteopathic Medical Association. And Frank, anything from you? No, the other thing I would say is for the Bureau itself, if anybody's watching the pod that's also on the Bureau, certainly speak up, whether it's within our meetings or through these applications, let people know what you're doing and share it with all. Thank you all. And thank you again for listening to Palma Does Podcast. If you have any ideas or any feedback regarding this podcast, please send them to poma at poma.org. So until next time, take care. Thank you for joining us for this edition of Poma Does. Be sure to subscribe to Poma Does wherever you listen to your podcasts and tell your friends and colleagues to tune in. Learn more about osteopathic medicine and Poma on our webpage, www.poma.org, and join the conversation on social media. We're on Facebook, Instagram, LinkedIn, Twitter, and YouTube, or email us at poma at poma.org. We'd love to hear from you. Join us next time for another edition of Poma Dust.